think at the end of the day, especially if you want to create something unique, you have to spend that time playing with things and just applying different looks. I still buy different LUT packs. Like I bought the White and Reverie LUT pack and Murray's LUTs and like a whole bunch of other ones in the last like couple of months. And while I don't necessarily actually use them on my work, I like to play with them and see what's going on there. And if you want, if you want to find something unique, I just really believe it's about really just seeing what's out there, trying to expose yourself to everything and spending the time learning. Hello everybody and welcome to Show Love episode 8. Uh, my name is Ben, I will be your host and joining me uh, across the internet from Perth, WA, it's Natalie Hind from the Auburn Hour Film Company. Thank you for joining me. Oh, thanks for having me. It's so exciting. Yeah, wicked. Um, do you want to start us off by t- telling everyone at home a little bit about who you are and what you're all about? Yeah, so I'm Natalie and my business is the Auburn Hour Film Co. So that's my wedding business. I do the occasional bit of um, small business commercially sort of work, but mostly love the weddings. Uh, that's probably my, my jam. So that's, that's pretty much what I do. I guess it's a bit more, um, I don't know, I've, I've kind of made a shift into what I would consider a little bit more of a simplistic style lately. Um, and I just like to keep it pretty like romantic and dusky and, and timeless, basically, it's my, my style. Nice, cool. Well, um, yeah, I guess, you know, I've got Natalie on the show t- today to kind of talk all things star, really. Image, look, grading, you know, I've, I've always um, looked at your work and been sort of in awe of how... Um, consistent especially it's look it, it, it looks you know um you have this way of um you know shooting grading everything that just your films look like your films um and they've got this beautiful soft yeah like smoky dusky kind of feel um that i think a lot of people out there are looking for and not yeah. really want <laughs> to, anyone to like just copy what you're doing um because that's not great but I, you know, it'd be great for you know everyone at home to hear a little bit about um, how you craft your images. Um, so yeah, do you want to start us off a little bit of, around um, just a bit, of, bit of background of you and how long you've been shooting weddings for? Yeah, so I've been shooting weddings for maybe four or five years now. Um, I graduated a film and TV degree back in like 2012 and at that point the degree is all about you know working as a part of a crew like preparing you for working in big documentaries or like feature films and things and as part of working in group projects with other students I left that degree just going like never again that's not what I want to do that's probably the last thing I really want to be doing is um is that kind of like team-based activity, which might have just been the fact that they were students (laughs) rather than professionals. So I'm sure like a real film set would be different. But I kind of came out of that going like, "Mm, not too sure what I want to do. And then just kind of through happenstance, met these photographers and I just got chatting about how I do film. And they were like, oh, did you want to come do some behind the scenes for us at some photo shoots? So I thought, why, why the hell not? Like, let's give it a crack and, and see what's going on. So I whipped out my 5D Mark II with my one lens, which was, a, I think, of the 51.8, which I still have, and it's really scratched up, but I love it. <laughs> I'm like, it's okay, we film everything at 1.8. <laughs> no one will see, no one will see. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, yeah, and I just started doing that, and then through that got more work doing, like, fashion events, runway shows, uh, and some like small business kind of videos. And um, that's kind of where I started out. And then also through some of the guys that I met at uni, they actually started doing their own wedding videos. And so I was sort of helping them second shoot. And then I was second shooting for maybe like two or three other wedding companies, just very occasionally. And I just told myself like, never doing weddings, <laughs> never, never, ever. 
Um, I think there was one particular guy who was super lovely, but I went over to drop off some cards one time, um, some SD cards, and he just was like, don't ever get into weddings. He looked so stressed. He had a huge whiteboard with about 28 names, which was his backlog. And um, he just seemed really unhappy. And he literally said the words like, don't ever do weddings. Like, it's just so stressful. Yeah. And I was like, okay. I'm out. Um, And then a couple of years went by and then a friend of mine was shooting a a fashion show with me and he was like, hey, I've got this couple and uh, they're friends of mine and they don't really have any money, but they would uh, really love like a wedding video. Do you reckon you might be able to help them out? And I, at the time, I had actually started using my A7S A7S II and realized you can use 120 frames and if you slow everything down to 25%, It's like it's on a tripod. It's so smooth, (laughs) which um, was a phase I was going through, which I loved because it was really different to working for these these other film companies where it was like tripod with a tripod head with a slider with another tripod head and then like the camera on top Mm. and just really heavy and bulky and difficult Mm. for me. Um, And I was like, you know what? Yeah, if they're like open to me, maybe filming their wedding the way that I would film this kind of event, you know, like mixing it up a bit. And yeah, so I ended up doing that wedding, actually really enjoyed it. And um, it all kind of just rolled on from there. As you do, you get get referrals. And um, yeah, I just thought, I thought it was really cool. I had a bit of a, like a mind blown moment where I was like, I don't have to do it with a slider and like seven gimbals and a crane. I can just do it yeah. with my camera. <laughs> cool. So um, I guess to sort of transition um, now into a bit about gear, because I want to kind of start um, start with gear because I kind of want to talk it quickly and then leave the gear aside because I think a lot of people focus on you know what gear do I need to make an image look good and whilst it's a little bit you know, about the gear it's very much not about the gear so let's quickly talk about um, what gear you do and don't use and what your kind of kit is um, what your kind of kit is looking like these days. Mm. Um, well, I'm probably should pretext this by saying I'm maybe the least techie videographer I've ever met. <laughs> so, um, um, you know, I still don't really know what bit rates are. So if that gives you any kind of context there, uh, I understand everyone's, you know, wanting to understand gear, especially when we're starting out. I think it's really hard to get those sort of lofty ideas that, that people talk about at workshops mm. and stuff. So we just kind of want to start with that foundation of like what what do I need to be able to make something? Um, my setup at the moment, I actually get my little thing here just for, oh, nice. for the looks. But yeah, basically I was like trying to think out how to explain it. I was like, I'll just bring it in. Um, so I use the A7S II and usually it's a 50 mil. Uh, and then I've got my little monitor, which is a small HD thing, which as soon as I got it, I just could never go back because you can actually load your LUTs onto it. Mm. And I was just like, this is incredible. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I usually use, a, I've got a little quick release plate on the bottom there that goes into either an Edelkrone pocket rig. I don't know if you've ever heard of one of those. Um, mm. Or I've got this yep. other little like shoulder mount plastic thing. It was like $30 on Amazon, which is really awesome as well. Um, but that's pretty much like 90% of the day outside of, uh, maybe speeches. That's what I rock. It's just like holding that with, with my little rig. I've seen people do hand, like totally handheld, like the humdrum mm. guys. Sometimes I see their little yep. behind the scenes things and like Jacob's just and fully just hand-holding like, Just like fully hand-holding it. Yeah. I am not gifted with uh, obviously like super stable hands. <laughs> so no you matter. You've got the shaky wrists. Yeah. I mean, I don't feel like they're super shaky, but every time I've tried it, I've just full regret. I'm like, no, nah. yeah. <laughs> just, just use the rig. It's fine. Um, yeah. And that's, that's pretty much my, my setup. I try to keep it really minimal. That's a lot to do with my overall approach as well as just mm. having a pretty being as minimal as I can on the day while still, you know, being efficient and having everything that I need. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. It, I, the, the, um, the monitors with the LUTs is something I've been thinking about for a little while. So you definitely recommend <laughs> if you, you want to you go You'll back. never be able to go back basically. Yeah. So like, and this is exactly what my, my friend who was my second shooter, he kept telling me he ha- he got the monitor first and he's like, don't buy it until you're, you know, ready to never go back. And I was <laughs> like, Ooh, um, and before I got it as well, I had 
I was using a cage, which the, um, the point of that was so I could attach the wooden handle from, mm -hmm. I don't know if it was tilter or small rig or something, um, yeah. and the, the wooden trigger handle, because it's so much easier to hold that than the grip on the Sony A7S mm -hmm. just isn't super ergonomic. Yeah. And, um, but then once I had sort of like that cage and the handle, the handle has a little cable, and then I wanted to add in the monitor, and the monitor has a cable, it all just started looking a little bit like, Hectic you, might as well be, you might as well be using like an FS5 by that point. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. It pretty much felt like an FS5 like set up and it was getting mm. quite heavy for me as well. Yeah. So I kind of had to weigh up what was more important. And uh, as you can see, the monitor one. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, well, but and, yeah. Um, so you don't use like a on-camera mic or anything um, no, during the day? I, I mean, like, I guess I started using... Um, a, a, an on-camera mic, but I actually, and this is again like n not being a tech person, so yeah. um, I can't really s tell much difference between the audio of the mic, mic on the A7S II, which I've always found to be really good in comparison to a lot of other cameras that I've used mm. in the past, and like the Rode video mic. I was like, there might be, maybe I'm just not hearing it. And I also don't use a lot of natural audio in my clips. So, yeah. you know, it just wasn't super necessary for me. And then I got the monitor and there was just nowhere really to, to put it outside of that unless I put a cage on, I guess. So, mm. um, I don't know. I've just never found it necessary. I do think about that sometimes. I'm like, should I be using a mic? <laughs> I don't know. No, I mean, because uh, <laughs> uh, what's lucky with us is that our clients are often complete layman's to video stuff and, and and if we can't really hear the difference then they're certainly not going to hear the difference so yeah i um it's it's because i've because i use a c200 when i shoot and i've got like a big shotgun mic you know bolted to, to the side the whole time and i have thought about how i can strip down the rig some more and i'm like do i need the microphone like i hardly i hardly ever if ever use that on camera shotgun mic you know in the wedding films i'm always using the like um you know radio mics or tascam recorders from like speeches and ceremony i'm like oh i probably could just like get rid of it and then just make the whole rig a lot smaller it's yeah i i guess sometimes i think about maybe more for those moments at prep possibly where mm. you know the bride comes out and the bridesmaids see her and they're like oh, oh or something God, but so yeah. it kind of uh, the camera has always picked it up pretty mm. well for just you know some kind of ambient like i'll just fade in and out as the music's playing so i've just yeah. i personally don't find it super necessary and you know i'm pretty much just all about like just keeping it to what i know i need and um, yeah. what's really going to enhance things for me if it's if it's only going to be like 10 or 20 percent different it's not really worthwhile for me yeah that's yeah. cool yeah nice cool and um real quickly last thing before we leave equipment aside is um the LUTs on the on the monitor. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Is it like so? Are you are you shooting what what basically ends up like looking what what the film looks like? Have you got it? Have you got the LUTs on the so, monitor pretty dialed in? E, sort of. So um, I guess we'll talk about it later. I think, but yeah, um, yeah. I have two LUTs that I actually layer on top of each other in mm -hmm. Premiere. Um, for every clip, but um, the monitor only takes one, one. file, so one yeah. LUT. So I use the stronger one that's kind of like 70% of the way mm -hmm. there. And also I, I've i actually applied the LUTs to Lumetri and then kind of messed with them a bit as well and saved that as a preset that I apply, but it only takes the actual cube file in the mm -hmm. in the monitor so monitor, yeah. it's yeah it's like 70 percent of the way there and it looks really nice and for me i find i have a really hard time visualizing the end product when i'm looking at you know log footage and i don't even film yeah. that flat i kind of film like yeah. halfway like um it's the who is matt settings the pv4 yep. yeah, everything yeah. <laughs> yeah. And um, I, I just had so many times, I'm just, I don't know, I guess hopefully other people have this problem too, but I would be filming something and I'd be like, eh, this looks really like vanilla, like kind of like whatever, and just stopped filming it. And I was like, yeah, I'll just pick it up again when I 
sort of feel like something else is going on here. And then I get into the edit and I apply my presets and I'm like, oh my God, that looked really nice. <laughs> like, <laughs> and I've got like a one second shot of it and I'm like, mm. well, next time I guess. So I, I just find that a little bit hard sometimes. Um, sometimes my presets do make things look quite radically different to how they look yeah. in camera. So I really love that. And it's also like you get people like dads and groomsmen love looking at my like camera setup. And yes. um, I think particularly because the, the monitor is quite, quite big. They can like see what's happening see, and they yeah. see it with the look and everyone's always like, Oh, it looks so nice. Like yeah. I can like hear them in the back there and I'm like, Oh yeah. <laughs> <It doesn't laughs> <matter. So> like, <laughs> Um, so yeah, I think it's, I think it's really fun. I think it's really helpful for me on the day, just understanding a little bit more how, how things are looking or how they will look at the end product. Just mm. cause I, I mean, I guess other people are, are way better at it, but I just find it very hard to, to see what the end product is going to be like yeah. without it. Interesting. I, you may have converted me. <laughs> yes. And I'm, also like, it's so much bigger. So focus is like so easy. Oh yeah. A breeze. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Cool. All right. Well, let's let's leave gear aside now, and um, you know, unless it obviously naturally comes up again. But um, before we dive too much deeper into the rest of the topic, I thought we could um, just have a quick look at a, a little section of one of your films, and we can have a little chat around that for um, for everyone watching the podcast. It'll be a lot easier for you to um, understand uh, Natalie's uh, you know look and and what her films are kind of uh, visually all about. So we're going to um, going to play that now and we're going to come back and uh have a little chat about it awesome they laugh together more than anybody that i know they have photographed together more than anybody that i know spice is a mountain of a man and you'll struggle to find a man with an even bigger heart the ability to make us laugh at any point in time and provide us with countless stories to tell our family and friends is absolutely astounding. He has a joie de vie, a love of life. He's just larger than life. Part man, part bicep, part cheeseburger. My darling husband. A six foot three athletic lean jock with a 46 centimetre vertical leap which is how he describes himself. You are the most caring, gentle, amazing human that I have ever met. You are a man with the most wonderful of intentions, accidentally ordering 12 dozen daffodils for Valentine's Day, which turned up looking like asparagus. And you bring so much laughter into everyone's life that you meet. I promise to happily receive back tickles every night to support you doing my laundry and to accept that I'll most likely spend every Saturday for the rest of my life at a rugby field. I intend to spend most of my life laughing at you, but sometimes with you. I can't promise that it will be easy, but I can promise that no matter what life throws at us, we will do it together. Sweet. All right. So, um, yeah. Uh, Natalie, do you want to tell us a little bit about... Um you know, the, the film, the couple, the wedding, tell us all about what, what we just saw. Yeah, so that was Courtney and Tobias. Court is actually a wedding planner slash stylist for OMG Events, which is like a company here in Perth. And she had messaged maybe like, I feel like it was only like six or seven months out from the wedding. Um, and it was actually kind of like relatively short notice, I guess. And it was the day before New Year's Eve. And I'd actually already had a, another wedding three hours away uh, for New Year's Eve. And I don't normally double book, but I was like, oh my God, I can't say no to this. <laughs> like, yeah. You know, wedding planner, just like the most, it's gonna be the most epic wedding. And it was, and she's su such a cool person. They're both just these, like I'm sure you can tell from the video, like mm. these really awesome, laid back, um, fun people. And the wedding itself was just super, super epic. And um, I really wanted to try and, and show that off a fair bit and, and really show how much work went into it and how stylish it was. And, um, you know, there was a lot of actually different lighting conditions on that day as well which 
I mean, I, I struggled with a little bit, like harsh light is not my friend. <laughs> I, don't, I don't love it. I don't love how it necessarily translates with my presets as well. But um, I try my best to make, make that work, I guess. Um, and that's just about like positioning and, and trying to be as careful as I can where I can. Cool. Yeah, I mean, because that was kind of... Uh one thing I not noticed in the, that sequence was the different lighting conditions, and but mm. it's still, it's you still kept it so consistent. So I'm glad you think um, so. <laughs> no, it totally. You know, you've got indoor, outdoor. You've got tungsten. You've got you know speeches like the sort of um, reception lighting, which is always really difficult to work with. Mm. Um, and then the ceremony, which looked like it had um, patches of really, really harsh light. Up the, back. The, the ceremony was mm. um, so my I have two least favorite shots in that video and I know yeah. both of them really well because I I had to include them but like I just didn't really love the lighting and two of them are like there's a shot of the groom and he's sort of like pointing off to the side like doing a little mm -hmm. like finger gun at someone um, yeah. and it's like the lighting is just really weird there's like these weird orange bricks in the background and I was just like not really liking it but it was a great shot and a great essentially like establishing shot of where they mm. were and sort of like giving context to the location of the, of the ceremony and then also actually Courtney coming down the aisle because there was just so much harsh light behind her and it was like really mm. overpowering and like she's wearing everything white um you know blonde hair and then just like this massive amount of um whiteness coming from the back so it was a little bit difficult editing that to actually be able to like see any features in her face yeah. without this just in intense whiteness and um I, I yeah i found that a bit difficult it's been a long time in that shot and i still don't love it but um you know it is what it is and i think to a certain extent on uh wedding days it's just like that's that was their wedding day. That's where they yeah. decided to have it. And I'm sure they love it and love that shot no matter what. Yeah. So, um, you know, I did the best I could with it. And, uh, you know, I wasn't like totally thrilled, but I, I, I think I did a pretty good job in the end. <laughs> no, absolutely. And yeah, the, um, the, the shot of her walking down the aisle is one I noticed where, um, and this is, I think, why, like, your consistency is so high because like as a singular shot I can see what you're saying around like you weren't like happy with it but I think what's important is you've kept it consistent with the rest of the edit mm. and so like where your presets and stuff with them being relatively aggressive they might be you know hindering you like perfectly exposing this shot but I think it's like as as a whole experience watching the film it all it all fits you know and it just it all flows and and i mean i mean i i kind of love the kind of like <laughs> it's almost a bit like like expired film they're kind of like how the highlights do funny things it's like i mean yeah i love it so yeah yeah. I've I've actually never like heard that before because I don't really do mm. anything to do with like film or photography in that way. But um, yeah, I was like, oh, okay, well, that's interesting to know because I I do know my my highlights go really pink when I yeah. especially during like sunset sort of time when the sun's gone. Um, I just want to bring back a bit of uh, like that orange like glow to their skin. Mm. So when I do that and I push the white balance up, my skies go purple. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> and at first I was like, oh, no, like, <laughs> that's not yeah. what we want. Um, but then I was kind of like, actually, I mean, as long as it's not like radically different to some other shot, um, I guess I kind of just, you know, my approach is a little bit more loosey goosey. I'm not like color matching every mm -hmm. shot to the one next to it and before it and throughout the whole um, film. I wish I was that um, detailed, but uh, I kind of just like to go with the flow of it and um, I actually think it looks kind of pretty and I guess it's something a bit different as well as long as it's not like super taking away from the shot and, and drawing people's focus to mm. somewhere it shouldn't be um, I just kind of embrace it <laughs> yeah no it's it's cool I think just like because I think one of the traps I fall into I think is um, thinking of each like 
shot singularly and then even like each wedding singularly and not the whole look as a whole mm. and i think what you've managed to land on is this really you know like well-defined consistent look that like if it's the kind of thing that like when you're flipping through presets if you have like the the shot up and you're like rolling through like this lot that lot this lot mm. that lot you know it's the kind of thing that depending on what preview thumbnail you were looking at you might not necessarily land on this exact lut because it's like oh yeah it's like making the skies pink or it's doing like weird things but it's this sort of thing that's like as a whole experience it just makes for this really unique feel that's really elegant and beautiful and and just wicked so yeah oh, thank it. you <laughs> um yeah i guess it just uh I, I've actually had that the last maybe year and a half or two years. I've actually been getting that. People say the, the consistency thing to me, which uh, previously I'd never really thought about uh, or never really, yeah, I, I just, I'd never really thought about it in that way. And then suddenly everyone just started saying it to me and I was like, oh, it must be something that is important to people, I guess. And having that and, um, you know, other filmmakers kind of saying that they, they admired that about like my body of work was very consistent. So I was like, okay, well, that's good. But I, I think it just comes down to me having found something and I, I play with it a bit, but I, I'm not necessarily that crazy invested that every single thing has to be absolutely perfect. And I'm like, well, you know, at the end of the day, it's telling their story and um, I think it looks, you know, nice and pretty. I don't see really an issue with, you know, one kind of random colour, not not quite, like, <laughs> there probably shouldn't be that colour, but who cares? Yeah. <laughs> it's a wedding video. Well, and I guess that sort of comes down to these LUTs that you've found and the combination that you've landed on. So do you want to tell us a little, a little bit about um, how you landed on that combination of LUTs and stuff? Yeah, absolutely. Um so I think, I'm trying to think back in the day, like I think maybe I was just, I've always used LUTs, I think. Um, and I find it a little bit strange. Sometimes people come to me and, and they're sort of asking me about like how I'm getting my looks and I'll tell them about LUT packs and they say sort of like, oh, like, no, I've never found anything that works. But I'm like, well, where have you been looking? There's just so much out there and maybe that's, half the problem is it's a little bit overwhelming and um, it's hard to find good packs, you know? It's, it, honestly, you buy stuff and then there's maybe like one out of like 20 or 50 or whatever that's anything close to what you'd want your end product to look like. So it's a, it's a little bit hard in that way, but basically I just, was, I just bought every LUT pack I could find that looked even remotely like what I wanted. Uh, you know, they're not that expensive, you can you can buy they're like you know thirty pounds I think for one or the first one of the first ones I bought was uh, I went on to Matt Johnson's mm. YouTube I think that was how I found him and it was like right before I think he hit peak Matt Johnson so I knew him before he was famous guys but um, <laughs> <laughs> he yeah he did like the color grading tutorial and the audio tutorial and he. Uh, I think he, he did a link to James Miller's D-LUTs, I think they're yeah. called. Uh, and that, I just downloaded it. I spent the 30 US dollars, whatever it was. And I just kept playing with them. It has like a really good range. And I think they're, they're quite strong. And maybe what people go wrong with, I guess, to start with is they apply everything at 100% and they go, why does this look so bad? Or like, this doesn't look anything like... Um, you know, the, the thumbnail that they, they obviously provided, but it's really about working out, you know, different lighting conditions, obviously, your footage is shot in a different way, and um, playing with, you know, not everything needs to be 100%, it can be like 80%, and you can mess around with highlights, and you can mess around with, like, everything else, you've just got to find something that's sort of in between, and I, I can't remember what it was, there was something in that pack that was kind of like, yellowy and glowy and and really and quite pretty it was it was still a little bit um the highlight the sorry the shadows were up a bit and they were it looked mm. a little bit too vintage i guess yeah. um that kind yeah. of murky darks textures that i wasn't super thrilled on but i was like cool this is like the first thing i found that's like definitely 
heading in the direction that I want to go. So I'll stick with this, it looks nice, um, and I'll just sort of have a play. And um, from there, I just, I sort of tried to stick with that again. I think even from when I started, I knew that consistency was in some way, even though not, not kind of like fully realising it, but I knew that couples would want to see something that's going to look like their film. They don't want, you know, one film to be really, you know, kind of warm tones and, and glowy, and then the next film's really like whites and blacks, you know? Mm. I always knew, I was like, I kind of have to just stick with something and, and give it a go and then be adjusting as I go, like just little adjustments here and there. And so that was basically what was happening. I used that luck for ages, and while I was doing that, I was buying every luck pack I could find and playing, basically and just like working with it and um, you know, I, I knew that, yeah, the, the darks were what I didn't like about that particular LUT. So what could I do to fix that and how can I change it? So let's look for some other things. And I think along the path of that, I also had to find LUTs that would suit my more commercial work and my business work as well, because they don't necessarily want these like really, uh, you know, yellowy sort of, glowy tones, they want maybe more crisp colours, um, like nice saturation, nice contrast, but like quite, qu quite clean. Mm -hmm. So I think just in that whole process, I ended up finding just like a couple of different LUTs that sort of worked and it was, it was just pure luck, kind of combining things and getting different looks and going, yeah, I really like this, but how do I then you know, I want this other element of like really, you know, white whites or something and how do I pull these together? And I think at the end of the day, especially if you want to create something unique, you have to spend that time playing with things and just applying different looks. I still buy different LUT packs. Like I bought the White and Reverie LUT pack and Murray's LUTs and like a whole bunch of other ones in the last like couple of months. and. While I don't necessarily actually use them on my work, I like to play with them and see what's going on there and mm. yeah, just, you know, I don't think there's anything wrong with experimenting and being open to like changing it up a little bit and sort of just taking little side steps and going, okay, well maybe we'll just like, you know, change this slightly and, you know, we'll be maybe more blue on this one but like not too much and yeah. If you want to find something unique, I just really believe it's about really just seeing what's out there, trying to expose yourself to everything and spending the time learning. Mm. Yeah. Totally. Absolutely. Um, with your... the look that you've landed on, was there any kind of thought around, like, it sort of fitting any kind of aesthetic that you wanted for your brand or is it just just more of a gut thing like this is what I what I like and I'm I'm liking the vibe of it yeah it was just totally random like I, I kind of ended up finding that look and just kind of at first it was just something quite different to what I'd ever used before and I liked just like the ways it, it sort of muted things and I was like oh this is kind of cool um, and it kind of reminded me of like more what photos look like than mm. necessarily what a lot of like wedding films were looking like. And yeah, I think it ended up being more so that that sort of happened and I ended up building my brand more around that and I, I just didn't realise how different it was to what anybody else was doing, I guess, mm. or like how different the look was to what anybody else had. Um, so that kind of ended up being like a really important point for me and then I was able to just sort of expand out from there cool nice um so besides the kind of the the LUTs and the coloring and the kind of co color correction and stuff um is there like what about the actual weddings and the couples and the styling itself kind of goes into your you know your the look of your films because they like you kind of it seems like like the the weddings not that they're all the same but they 
it seems like <laughs> you have a. Are you saying I have a, a type? A, 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 <laughs> you, you have a couple. You, you know, it seems like you, you've got a couple who obviously gel with your look. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's just kind of. I'm a pretty big believer in similarly with consistency across like your look. I think you should have consistency across sort of um, the type of work that you take on and the type of work that you put out there as well. Um, work turns into work, basically. You, you put a bunch of backyard weddings with like brides wearing biker jackets um, out into the world as your portfolio, that's what you're going to get because couples come to your website and they'll look at your portfolio and what they really want to see is themselves reflected in your work. Um, and they're going to find that so much easier if what they're looking at is a wedding day um, and a couple that are reflective of what they're kind of envisioning for their wedding day. Um, and I think that instills a lot of confidence in people when they can sort of see something that looks really similar. Sorry, that was me. There we go. Oops. Um, yeah, so I, I'm pretty big on just making sure that a lot of what I put on my portfolio page, like that's not to say every wedding I get is a marquee wedding, and that's fine, <laughs> but I love marquees. And so I'm usually pretty big on like if someone messages me and like, yeah, it's an outdoor wedding um, marquee or, you know, out at, um, there's like some really nice venues around Perth that I just know are absolutely gorgeous and they it's already in such a great place, you know, my aesthetic is only really gonna enhance it. So I really love, um, and I, I sort of try to enhance that basically and, and find those couples. And I think just from having done a few of them and, and that kind of style resonating with a certain kind of bride who, um, or a certain kind of couple, I should say, that um, has a certain, like dreamy kind of stylish element to them. Um, I would say I'm not really yeah, catering to the backyard bride um, mm. couples, but that's because they don't really, probably wouldn't really love the way that I shoot weddings either. Uh, and just in general, in terms of like Instagram and whatnot, I just, I'm not afraid to repost old weddings, like especially because I've just come out of, you know, our winter. I don't really have a lot of fresh weddings to be posting, so I just post mm. old ones that I'm like, these guys were amazing, love to get more of these kinds of weddings, um, you know, and I think that's just important in, in helping clients see what you like to do as well. Yeah, totally. Um, so when, like, do, have you got a bit of a sort of strategy together around, like, what and how you're posting beyond like you know like uh obviously the the kinds of weddings you want to be getting um but then even like the the types of shots and how they're fitting together and what the kind of you know how to keep your kind of voice online um all cohesive and consistent well, I, I actually re-edited a wedding from two years ago <laughs> recently. Um, just I did see I had that. A, that was cool. Yeah. Oh, good. Um, yeah. So that I did that two years ago and I still get referrals from that wedding. I think it was featured on The Lane, uh, the wedding mm -hmm. blog, and I still get people coming to me saying they found me through The Lane and that's the only wedding I have on there. <laughs> so it has mm -hmm. to be through this wedding. Mm. Um and I kind of, that was through, that was that wedding happened during a really big sort of learning curve point for me. So I really loved the wedding and I thought I did like a good job at the time, but then obviously my style changes. I've become a little bit more refined with the way that I'm shooting. And it's not necessarily uh, like in terms of the work that I did and the way that I put that edit together, not necessarily super reflective of my brand now. Um, and yet I just love that wedding and it was, it was just the epitome of weddings I would, mm. I would love to be doing more of. And so in the back of my mind, I'd always kind of thought like, maybe I should just like re-edit that a little bit and oh, when will I ever have time to do that? And you know, you always kind of think about doing it and you never do. Yeah. And I just had a bit of time. I had like this spare week and I was like, you know what? Ugh, I think I'm just going to try it. And, uh, I was a bit worried that I was going to get back into the edit and just be like, this is all so bad. Like, what was I doing? You know, because two years ago, obviously, so mm. 
different in the way that that I would shoot back then. But it was a it was a really ex interesting experience as well because talking about in terms of shots that I'm looking for, I actually went through a lot of, especially the prep footage and the shots that I'd chosen to use previously in the edit were pretty radically different to what I would have chosen to use like now. So a lot of the shots from the prep especially are just completely different in the new little like, it's like a little teaser mm -hmm. two minute thing. Um, Cause it's a lot more detail oriented back then. It was just like details yeah. and bride and bride getting dressed. Whereas what I try to focus a lot more on is family and, you know, who's there with you and reactions as well as the pretty dress going on and like, you know, her looking gorgeous, which mm. isn't hard, but, you know. Mm. Um, and so I just found that really interesting. And then I was like, yep, I'm just going to like apply my, my new looks to it and try to use a lot more um, precision with, with the like, the shots that I wanted to use being a bit smoother and not as jarring as they were. But yeah, I think I think um, I was really happy with that and I was actually really happy with myself that I, I decided to go back and, and redo it. Because I think, you know, a lot of the time we finish a project and we just want to be done with it because it's, you know, it is a labor of love, but it's like a huge amount of work to go through. So having to reopen the file and go back through and, and re-edit something seems a bit daunting, but especially if that's a wedding that is important and you know I've kind of circled back onto it and it's still just a fantastic portfolio piece like why not capitalize on it you've got that footage already why wait for another you know couple like that mm. to come along when you've already got that couple um, and I'm you know in the same way with with anything else on Instagram I'm I'm pretty brutal with it in terms of like deleting or I guess now you can archive which is great uh, photos that maybe don't like fit as much anymore um, you know you scroll through the feed and then like way back in you know 2014 there's just like this whole bunch of stuff that's not really <laughs> reflective of the brand anymore so I'm like cool just archive 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 like this couple already has their wedding film you know mm -hmm. and I feel Instagram is is a platform for us to market ourselves uh, yeah. our social media it, like my business one is is for me and my business to show what we're about. So I love just putting my best foot forward there and making sure I'm, I'm really terrible with posting. I should probably say that. Like I, I think I posted three photos at like 6 p.m. last night um, just <laughs> You know, just to, to get it out there, just to, like, just to, just to um, do it, yeah. you know, and, and like there's like three likes on them, and and that's that's fine. That's not really what it's about for me. It's not about necessarily getting like 70 likes on every on every image or every video that I post. It's more about having that Instagram as a landing page, and so when a couple lands on my Instagram and they're looking at it, because that's how most couples find me if it's not a referral but then even if they get a referral the first thing they're probably going to look up is your instagram mm. so just making sure that especially when they land on it my grid just looks like me it just looks like a storyboard of my videos basically um and like having really like those really great videos kind of up there first for them to be clicking on so i don't think there's anything wrong with you know you post your new content absolutely but keep posting those like really, really great weddings that you're really proud of. The videos are really reflections of you. Um, keep posting them. So keep making sure they're at the top of your feed. So when people land on that, that's the first thing they see. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in terms of like curating, in terms of especially like the grid and stuff, are you making sure that you're balancing like like the what's in those thumbnails and like <laughs> it, like some couples and some not like how you know how are you kind of because i feel like i always default to just like just like the couple and every single one and and it it makes it yeah not it yeah so this is something that i learned from um camp common folk which is something that happens here in perth it's actually the last year they're doing it which is really sad like this year but uh i went to that maybe 
three or four years ago, and Lucy Spartalus, Spartalus? I don't, like, I'm not entirely sure how to say her last name, but Lucy spoke, she's from, she takes pictures, he makes films, um, and she did this amazing talk about Instagram, because obviously she has a huge following, and something that really stuck with me about that was that message of, you know, your Instagram feeds your own, um, and also that, you know, the way to curate it is to actually look at, you know, from your client's perspective, what are they what are they seeing when they land? And is every shot just like a couple mid shot, couple mid shot, couple mid shot, you know? Mm -hmm. Like that's maybe not the most aesthetically diverse and pleasing way to be putting things up there. So what you kind of want to do is mix and match maybe like a shot of a couple and maybe it's wide shot and maybe it's a bit bright with maybe a close up of some florals, which maybe it's a little bit darker. And so, you know, my feet is not perfect. <laughs> And that's, you know, that's not going to be 100% exactly how it goes. But in the back of my mind, I've always kind of got, okay, well, I just posted like a real close up of something and it was kind of bright. So maybe my next one can be like, like a real wide shot of like a bridal party or, um, you know, it can be, uh, you know, a detail or something, something that's going to be quite different in terms of how close I am to the subject. And then also kind of the opposite in terms of whether it's lighter or darker, just because that's m way more visually appealing. Mm. Mm. Totally. And it, it's, yeah, I mean, it's kind of like editing. You're not going to put like shot of like mid shot of the couple, mid shot of the couple, mid shot of the couple, like one after the other, you know, you're going to go like close ups and then wides and then, you know, it, it makes sense that you're trying to tell a bit of a story through, um, that's pretty script. much it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it. And it's like sometimes I'll just post a shot of like some champagne or like something and it gets like zero likes or whatever. But when I look at it in the grid, I'm like, yeah, this looks sick, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. <laughs> like that's, that's, that's what it's right. about, you know. Yeah. And it, it's, yeah. you know, I'm, I can't say I really care about likes too much or mm. um, engagement in that way. But it seems to be working for me. So I um, must be doing something okay. <laughs> it d definitely. Um Cool. Okay. Well, to sort of start to um, wind us up now, um, what would you say would be some of the things people can start to look at if they're wanting to sort of up their consistency? You know, it's something that I definitely have um, struggled with in the past. It's like I'm happy with my films, like as a like, as, as a film, I'm happy with ha how it looks, but then when I sort of take that extra step back and I look at my films all next to each other um they don't have the kind of consistency that say you know someone like yourself has within their work so for someone like me you know what could i what are some of the things that i could do to um up the consistency in my work if that's what i wanted to to do i think it's more mostly about um not feel like I think that that lack of consistency comes from wanting every wedding film to be a li like different possibly like or a little bit too different from each other or not necessarily allowing yourself to just stick with one look and just kind of being happy with that because of course you know as soon as you've got one thing like if you were told um, okay, if you could only wear one outfit for the rest of your life, what would it be and you'd pick something and then you'd pretty soon you would get sick of it you know, even if you loved it when you chose it. And that's something I feel as well. And I'm like, oh, you know, maybe I could mix it up a bit and change this or change that. Um, but it has to be in small steps and in subtlety and not just this massive like, well, I'm going to do everything like totally more blue toned now and like, you know, um, really up the contrast and, and make it so radically different. Um, that yeah I think that's kind of where you start to lose that consistency because you're not um, allowing yourself to settle into one look um, and it's almost I mean I, it actually feels very similar to maybe when you know uh, someone's looking for bridesmaids dresses because I used to work at um, a retail store where they sell bridesmaids dresses and it's like you, you could be searching your entire life and still find something that you'll find that you like better. Or like, you know, a wedding dress for a bride as well. It's like you could search literally your entire life and you'll always find another dress that you like better. But mm. you can't keep doing that. Like if you kind of try something on and you go, 
I really like this, this is like this works for me, awesome, and you stick with it, that's where you're gonna find that consistency and just like little changes here and there is great. But just I think just trying to let yourself settle into something that you like and then reminding yourself why you like it rather than always just kind of feeling, you know, that I think there's this culture of everything has to be new. Every time I do a wedding video, it has to be new and uh, it's so radically different and individual to this couple and, you know, I'm going to try all these new effects. Otherwise, you know, these other filmmakers are going to look at my work and think it all, it's just the exact same wedding video. Mm. But I think there's a lot of strength in, for, especially for your brand, in staying with something and sticking with it and, yeah, like modifying things slightly to suit you more when, when you know it's not quite hitting the mark but finding something that overall fits you and then just tweaking. Cool. Yeah. Fantastic. Um, it kind of answered one of my other questions as well, which is great. Um, okay. So then I guess maybe my last question would be um, how, how do you, I guess, I don't want to how, how, how do I want to phrase it? How do you be brave with a look? Because that's one thing that I, I look at other people's work. I look at pe you know people like yourself. Um, you know, there's other pe people's work which is quite heavily stylized, and I look at them. And go, oh, that's so cool! But then whenever I get in, into my own e editing suite, I get scared of going too far away from a natural look. Mm -hmm. And, you know, what, what are some, like, how could I kind of, I guess, fight that fear around um, being bold with my looks? I think that's, you know, in part taking ownership of your work a little bit because there's um, a general fear and I, I feel it too that if I try something too different, my clients won't like it. And yet that comes from, you know, consistency and, and whatnot. You know, obviously you want to have that consistent body of work. I think the best thing you can possibly do is um, do personal projects or do free work when it suits you um, and it works for you. So I'm very careful with the free work thing, but um, I actually, I've done like a free like a free, like a, a gifted, like a wedding to friends of mine for the past three years. Um, I've done their wedding videos, but it's also been, it, it's, it's great for me because I love spending that time with them and I love being part of their day in that way. But it's, an, uh, it opens a door for me to try new stuff and I don't have to worry about what that the client wants, whether that this is going to be like too out there for them. Um, I just completely do whatever I want to do. If I want to try that new thing, um, I'll just try it out. If I want to do my colors a bit differently, I'll do it like that. Um, and I think it just, it, it creates a really safe space to, to do what you're saying and to expand out there, whether it's like a wedding video or if it's just a style shoot someone's asked you to do or if it's um, you know some other kind of video or work that someone's asking you to do maybe taking that opportunity to say hey let's do this for us um, and or, you know or for me and see about taking those leaps you know any any of those things that I've been thinking about doing it could be a total fail but it doesn't matter like this is for me this isn't for a client in this circumstance um, mm. And then also, like, just in general, I've found with doing films, there has been times where I've, whether it's been, like, kind of a music track that I'm, like, ooh, this is a little bit out there, like, <laughs> this isn't our usual, like, acoustic, <laughs> you know, um, you know, a country-esque sort of uh, wedding song. I wonder if they're going to like this weird hip-hop track. Mm. Um, and I've actually really never experienced pushback in that way uh, I think we should appreciate that you know or like you know minor different like transitions and that sort of thing that we want to try, try out I don't think clients see that quite the same way we do and we shouldn't underestimate how much our you know our work and our opinion is valued by our clients as well I think 
we can take a few risks and I think usually it pays off. Hmm. Totally. Now that's, that's really good to, to think about and I, I will be sort of decompressing <laughs> a bit of that um, going forward because it's, yeah, it's definitely something that I've always struggled with um, and it's, it's, well, it, yeah, it's, it's been a sort of one of the biggest frustrations for me. It's sort of been a hurdle that I have never quite been able to, to jump over yet and it's well, sort I mean, of something that I've been working on. What's the worst case scenario? As, especially, I think it, it takes a bit of inward looking and the same thing with, you know, your looks and stuff. It takes a bit of like, you actually do have to sit down a bit and think, well, mm. what am I aiming for? Like, what am I trying to achieve so that I can sort of, you know, instead of seeing all of these options and, and not knowing mm. where the hell I'm going, can just sort of like narrow that down and give myself a bit more scope about where I want to be going and that can change but you know mm. give yourself something to aim for that's a little less broad and you know in the way of shooting or like trying new editing techniques and stuff if you think to yourself well this is definitely something that's heading in the direct like this kind of you know hip-hop track is like definitely I would love to be doing more of that that's really where I want to go with my my brand let's try it I feel like it really fits in this wedding video an absolute worst case scenario the couple says hey do you think we could you know change that track or like hey can we maybe not like not use that effect or something um and you change it but you know maybe you have that edit that you made for yourself and you say hey do you mind if I just put my version on my website um mm. because that's you know I, I kind of want to go in this direction I'm happy to like obviously this is more in line with my previous work and I'm happy to do that for you but um, can I use this for my portfolio? And I don't imagine why anyone would have an issue with that. And it's going to mm. be something that is going to create a lot more fulfillment for you in the future. So you're, you're always heading towards where you want to go rather than just sort of like, no, 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 we'll just keep it like normal. We'll just keep it chill, you know, yeah. do what the client yeah. wants <laughs> or what we think the client wants, you know, mm. so yeah. yeah. Cool. Mm. Awesome. All right. Well, I think that'll do us for our main topic. And um, before we before we leave, before we say bye, um, I'd love to chat with something. Well, it's still sort of within the world of weddings, but outside of wedding films themselves. Um, uh, you mentioned you went to a workshop recently. Do you want to tell us a little bit about? about, mm. uh, about well, workshop? I've been to a bunch of workshops actually. Mm. Um, I yeah, I'm a bit of a workshop freak, but um, so. Like Camp Common Folk is one that I've been to a couple of years, which is um, in Perth, but last year, sorry guys, that they're doing it. Um, but uh, earlier this year, I went to Caldera Workshop, which was in Santorini. And I they had three photo speakers and three video speakers. And I was like, awesome. Like, this is gonna be my first workshop with actual video speakers, because um, Common Folk actually is, is mostly photographers. Um, and I was so excited and I was like, I'm going to learn so much from these videographers. And yeah, it's nice that the photographers are speaking as well, but I, I probably won't really learn much from them. It would just be nice talking to them. And like going through the workshop and experiencing, I did learn a lot from the video guys, but I actually was just incredibly inspired by two particular speakers. Um, Fur, who's, um, I think he's from Mexico and he does like these really artsy kind of like uh like really interesting kind of photos and it's not for everyone and it's probably not necessarily what i would love for my wedding if that's what i was going but his energy and his enthusiasm and the way like even his motivations for doing these kinds of photos was just so mind-blowing and um, also uh, Faku Santana, he is from Argentina and he does these incredible, like he basically does street photography for weddings. And he shoots in this little X Pro 2 camera with like one wide angle lens and shoots in JPEG and just does these incredible frames that you know, it almost takes you time to digest them. You have to see them up big so you can really appreciate all the detail that he gets in and all these, like, faces and, and how light and lines work for him in those images. And I think especially for where 
I was at at the start of the year and where I'm at now, those sorts of things are maybe where I, like, I feel like I fall short and where I want to be pushing myself is kind of going, okay, cool. Um, I know how to film a wedding. Like, I'm pretty confident in that. I've done a lot of them. It's kind of like step by step by step prep and then ceremony, and yada, yada. So how are we going to maybe push it a little bit? And it's kind of like, okay, well, I want to think less about moving and gimbals and this and that, and I want to think, like, what's in my shot? And where does the light fall? And maybe instead of just going and shooting and just like accepting everything as it is, I'll take the two minutes to kind of look around and look for where my light is and maybe ways that I could, you know, move things into that light or like move things away from it and, and work on my scene in that way. And it was just really, I left that feeling really, really inspired and, um, you know, kind of feeling like, oh, Never going to tell myself I'm like, you know, not going to learn something at the workshop again. Because <laughs> I think there's always something to learn um, in that way. And uh, even recently I was looking at this photographer, Fan Ho, who was a street photographer in, I think it was Hong Kong, in the late 50s and early 60s, I want to say. And he just does incredible work with like really hard shadows and lines and it's just street photography. So he's waiting for these things to happen. He's not like setting anything up. He's just looking at the light and kind of realizing what's happening with it and waiting for his shot to happen for him. Uh, and I think there's a lot to be said for that. And I think if you can start like thinking a bit more at that level, you can just really elevate your work a lot. So um, that's, I think, where I'm finding a lot of inspiration is, is trying to work, you know, you know, like cinematography and director of photography is a, is a video term and really trying to incorporate that into my work um, and really sort of think about a frame as a photo and then incorporate yeah. movement into it rather than just relying on, oh, well, so, someone's moving in it, so it's fun and, like, it's a great shot, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I find a lot of inspo in that. Awesome. Work it, you know, that, that, that sounds super inspiring and, like, I do, I, I have found that too whenever I've listened to, like, keynotes from, like, really cool photographers and stuff, you do get that sort of, it's just just a little refresher that like we're like we're still working with a camera that captures a frame and the there's so many more distractions with video with movement and audio and story and there's so many things that we have to think about that it's sometimes nice to have that reminder to just go back to the basics of thinking like what's in the frame what's the light doing what's the what are the lines doing um and having that foundation to then build all those other things on top of for sure yeah and like even just it just made me think a lot more about um like establishing shots and stuff and mm. how i'm framing things and i think even when i started doing video and i see maybe uh, like other people who are who are just starting out in video doing it as well we tend to crop in really close like everything mm. is just so close like um i guess what we're looking for is is maybe like the, the emotion on the faces and stuff, but, um, you know, I've kind of just taken to start so to go, like, I just want to step back. Like, almost every time I think, yep, this is a great shot, I'll actually just go take another couple of steps back. Every time, like, and I think, no, I'm wide enough now. But I'm like, no, take another couple of steps back. Yeah. And, um, and that's really worked for me, especially because when we're looking on these tiny little screens, um, even with the monitor, the monitor has helped, mm. but um, when you see it on your computer screen and it's much bigger, you realize how close you are. And you're like, oh my God, why didn't I just sort of give it some breathing room? Um, mm. And you find that a lot more with photography, I think. You know, they'll, they'll shoot wider and you know, what they're looking for is more things in the frame and they're being more detailed with it. And um, I guess we think we can get away with not being detailed, which we can because it's, it's on and it's gone in a second, you know. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, you can really elevate your work by, I think, taking all of that into account and trying to incorporate it as much as you can. Obviously, it's a wedding day. Things happen, but, um, yeah. you know, and I don't always <laughs> achieve what I'm trying to do, but um, 
I give it my best shot and it's like in those like two or three shots throughout the day and I'm like, yeah, I'm so glad I did that. And, um, you know, I think it really, it really helped the whole film. Yeah, cool. Awesome. And um, another workshop is your own workshop. So do you want to tell my us workshop. a little bit about that? <laughs> Segway man. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So um, I am running a workshop with Mel Branson from Till Death. Uh, she is awesome and we've actually just won, run one recently in Perth but we're taking it interstate and heading over to Melbourne in September next year. I think it's the 15th and the 16th of September. It's a two-day uh, workshop extravaganza and uh, yeah like we're, we're basically really passionate about education we're really passionate about community and uh, one of the reasons I had to go to Santorini <laughs> for um, my first video workshop was because we don't actually really have anything here in Australia so um, Mel and I just kind of felt like it's maybe time that we um, we help our community and we just provide an option for people who maybe want to learn um, in person and, and come to our workshops and maybe hear what two, two, two um, wedding videographers have to say. And yeah, we're really excited and um, you know, we're kind of in the midst of putting it all together now and uh, I think it's going to be pretty, pretty cool. Yeah. Wicked. Fantastic. All right. Well, um, yeah, uh, details on, on, uh, on the workshop. Uh, it's called Now We're Here, sorry. Now We're Here. <laughs> Details on Now We're Here will be below. And, um, yeah, so you guys can uh, have a look at that and uh, mark September next year in your k k k calendars. And, um, yeah, apart from that, was there anything else you wanted to leave us with, Nat? Um, not really. It's been awesome talking to you. Thank you so much for having me on the show. Likewise. No, yeah, it's it's been, it's been really cool and just, yeah, so much for me to – to, to digest and think about um yeah it's it, it's been awesome so yeah thanks so much for coming on no worries <laughs> cool alrighty well um yeah that's gonna do us and we'll uh see you guys next time peace <laughs>